Hi, and a warm welcome to Whiskey Sisters, the podcast. I am Jennifer Rose. And I am Inga Larissa. Together we are Whiskey Sisters. We would love you to join our weekly adventures. Come on, let us rock your whiskey world. There'll be lots of news, gossip, bottle releases, and we will be raising our glasses through the tastiest of drams. We'll be hosting expert guests, hitting the road, and visiting some of the distilleries near you. And let's not forget dropping in some cheeky whiskey facts. Join our whiskey journey. You're listening to Whiskey Sisters, the podcast. This week, we are taking you to Finland as we chat about Finnish whiskey with Maria and Sana from Whiskey Girls Finland. Oh, yes. And if you've not checked them out on social media, please do. Their Instagram account is an absolute belter. True Finnish account, for sure. Absolutely. Before we start sampling some drams, let's stick our noses into the latest whiskey news. Stick your nose in it. The amazing Spring Bank has been named the world's most admired whiskey brand in the second edition of the annual Top 50 list released by Drinks International. The Campbelltown-based distillery is owned by J.A. Mitchell & Co. and produces some of the most exceptional single malt whiskies in the world. Do you know, Spring Bank is such a cult following, doesn't it? And it's so hard to get your hands on. Yes, I was just going to say, if anyone from Spring Bank or anything to do with Spring Bank is listening... We would love to feature them on the podcast, so get in touch. Completely. I absolutely agree. The last couple of times I've been at the Potstill Amazing Whiskey Bar in Glasgow, I've been ordering um, some Springbank 10 whenever it's there, but it just flies off the shelf everywhere. So William Grant & Sons has announced the launch of the oldest expression to date from its Speyside based Balvini distillery. Do you say Balvini or Balvini? I've heard people say Balvini. I, I think I say Balvini. Balvini, yeah. I'm not sure. This is one of those... <laughs> Oh, yeah, here we go with the pronunciation. Although I did read from somewhere that if you don't put the the in front of the Balvini, then you're definitely saying it wrong. Ah, so don't forget that the. The Balvini 60 42.4% ABV is a 60-year-old single cask, single malt Scotch whiskey, which was distilled in 1962 and matured in a European oak hogshead. This latest limited edition release marks the anniversary of Balvini malt master David C. Stewart MB, who is celebrating six whopping decades at the distillery. Whoa, that's devotion for you, isn't it? Making him the longest serving malt master in industry history. Whoa, that's quite an accolade, longest yeah. serving malt master. Well, he must be one of the keepers of the quake as well. Yeah, for he, sure. he must have like upped the realms of Keeper of the Quake and have some even more badass title than that, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the whiskies are just so good as well. Yeah, that's another distillery we need to cover. So many distilleries and so little time, Inca. Another news, again, about the Macallan. So they, <laughs> this is actually, I was quite, um, normally I you know, tend to joke about Macallan, but this actually sounds quite interesting. I quite like this, this one. So the Macallan has revealed the second edition of its Harmony Collection, which celebrates the world of coffee. The new limited annual release series features two single malt whiskies inspired by intense arabica <laughs> for domestic markets and smooth smooth arabica. I don't know, Ara- I say it's really weird. Smooth arabica for global travel retail. The Macallan whiskey maker has created the intensely flavored whiskies to pair with coffee, having been inspired by the Ethiopian arabica coffee bean. And to create the whiskey, he selected a combination of American American and European oak casks to achieve the distinctive notes offered by the single malts. Inspired by the intense Arabica is said to be reminiscent of sweet yet strong espresso coffee and has a higher ABV of 44%. While the other one, the smooth Arabica, offers the flavors of gently spiced and soft Americano coffee and rests at 40%. So see when they're saying paired with coffee, do they mean like shoving it in a warm coffee like like, you know, you would say, oh, an Irish coffee. Or do you think you're like sipping on a juicy coffee and like a cold whiskey by the side? Yeah, maybe you'll have like an espresso or something. Mm-hmm. Or how about dark chocolate coated coffee beans? Oh, 
<laughs> that sounds good, doesn't it? I love coffee. I like a lot of people say, oh, you should give that up. But I just think, no, my life would not be as, it just wouldn't be as pleasurable. I'm sticking with the coffee. Yeah, me too, for sure. I live in Italy. Come on. <laughs> exactly. You'd be thrown out. Yeah. <laughs> Worldwide whiskies with the Whiskey Sisters. In this episode, we will be sampling two whiskies from Kri Kri Inca. Can you help me out here? Kura. Kura Distillery. But we are actually going through our tasting notes with Maria and Sana while we chat about Finnish whiskey in general. The two samples we have are the classic Kura malt and Kura wood smoke. Dram on Fire will feature Malt Mates Volume 2. More about that in a bit. So Inca, how do you say whiskey in Finnish? Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I think even I could manage that. <laughs> yeah, it's basically pretty much the same. V-I-S-K-I. Whiskey imports to Finland weren't allowed until 1904. No way. And I've actually have seen some old Scotch whiskey adverts and articles in old Finnish newspapers from that time. They were even saying how like Scotch whiskey tastes strangely smoky. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Whiskey sales were lo- very low in Finland in general. Everyone was drinking illegal spirits. Just making a little bit of moonshine, you know. Also during the First World War from 1914 to 1917, alcohol sales were allowed only in first class hotels and pharmacies. And as a result, the Finnish consumption of alcohol per capita was the lowest in Europe. Really? I know. <laughs> Definitely not true anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Made up for lost time. The nail in the co- its coffin was delivered with the introduction of prohibition in 1919. After the repeal of the prohibition, the state monopoly known as Alco was founded for alcohol production and sales in 1932. The selection was pretty good with 156 items, including 16 blended whiskies. Oh, that's off to a good start a good selection there and Alco tried making their own whiskies but I don't think they actually were that good and they weren't that popular in Finland we obviously love to drink vodka and actually cognac has been popular in Finland throughout the years and Mm. even like all my family my grandparents my mom everyone was drinking cognac really yeah I I wouldn't have guessed that I know it's very strange and they also mass produced a lot of cocktails during the (laughs) winter war I just thought I just wanted to throw it that in there like it was actually a Finnish invention really Uh, so it was the alcohol the spirits company who was producing and selling alcohols that they were making the Molotov cocktails for the war whoa just whipping out the the facts here as well I'm loving this (laughs) and Alco's attempts to grow the Finnish whiskey market continued until production of its best selling whiskey Whiskey 88 ceased in the year 2000 it wasn't the end though since then a handful of craft distillers have been modestly tapped into the Nordic whiskey trend, most notably Tirenpili. 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 Thank you, Inka. The distillery started life as a brewery, but the owner soon turned to whiskey, importing a copper still from Scotland and former Glen Ord manager William Meikle to help commission the enterprise. To date, Tirenpili has bottled several expressions, all produced from locally sourced ingredients. And then there's Kura Distillery, which makes whiskey from 100% Finnish rye. Like many great ideas, Kura Distillery Company was conceived in a sauna by a group of friends with a shared love of rye whiskey. How cool is that? And yes, there is a few other distilleries as well, but let's get the Finns in first and get their view on the latest distilleries. Whiskey Girls, Finland. Tervetuloa. Welcome, ladies. Let's start by a quick introduction. Who are you and how did you start your whiskey journey? We are Whiskey Girls Finland and I'm Maria. I'm Sana. And uh, we actually started our journey, is it almost two years ago? Yeah, two years. Yeah. Yeah. In October, I recall, were some of our first kind of meetings. So the three of us, there are three whiskey girls, but Savala unfortunately couldn't join us today. We met up in northern Finland in Lapland, which, which is absolutely stunning as a, mm. as a place. And of course, a dram fits perfectly yeah. in that setting. So we're all very outdoorsy. We love hiking. Uh, we love to go to sauna. 
and yep. ice swimming. We were kind of thinking, what should we do uh, in that, you know, in Finland, winter is the most dark time of the year. So we were like, well, we're going to do some sauna, do some ice swimming, maybe a dram of whiskey will fit that in really well. So <laughs> did you always like whiskey or did it was that something that you kind of found together when you met? Well, I like whiskey since I was like 20 years old. Mm-hmm. My first um, whiskey was uh, La Gabulin, 16 year old. Wow. Yeah, I started at the top. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, but then uh, we had this mutual hobby because the COVID and we were bored. Well, there's some amazing things have come out of COVID then because your Instagram page, if any of our listeners haven't yet seen it, is amazing. Some stunning images and videos. You ladies look fantastic and it makes me want to come to Finland looking at your page. (laughs) Thank you you so much. We should all go ice swimming together. Yes. Definitely. I'm in. And I've not been to Finland yet and absolutely want to come and and join in some ice swimming and and whiskey drinking. But I'm really keen to hear what's it like to be a female that loves whiskey and is interested in whiskey in Finland? Is that kind of like welcomed and accepted? Can you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, I think that's a brilliant question. Yeah, We were just two weeks ago, there is this big whiskey festival yeah. that is organized in Helsinki and it had been uh, a few years because of COVID that it hadn't been uh, organized called uh, Uiske. And actually that was one of the first times that we met the entire kind of Finnish whiskey scene at once. Yeah. And of course, we've had a lot of, you know, talks through our Instagram, yeah. we've visited distilleries, but that was the first time that we met everyone kind of together. And it felt, you know, just going to see your friends. Yeah. I mean, we've never met before physically with everyone, but, you know, there was just lots of hugs and and lots of talks. and Very and unusual. People- Finnish people too. <laughs> yes, it's very rare. If you know Finnish people, we never hug it out. That's like not our thing. But if you drink whiskey, I think there is something that, you know, we have a connection through that. Yeah. And I don't yeah. think it has anything to do with your gender or your age or how you look like. That whiskey hobby connects us. And at least I feel that we've always been super welcomed yeah. in these circles Even though we come with no background, we know nothing. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. It's great to hear, isn't it, Inka? Yeah, definitely. And that's the thing. The whiskey is for everyone. And you have to start from somewhere. And you just go on this journey and you meet people from different levels of whiskey expertise. And you always take something with you when you meet these people. Exactly. And of course, there's a lot of men in whiskey business and it's um, nice to see more and more women coming to tasting whiskeys trying them and yeah. liking them but well it is mostly men right now yeah and we yeah. would like to change that we want to make it easier to be women in whiskey business and in general like liking whiskeys yeah yeah you need to start like a Finnish women's like a whiskey club or something great to see like females such as yourselves just being an inspiration to us all yeah. and kind of showcasing that you can do this as a hobby you can do this also as a profession and do really well so I think absolutely there should be more females drinking whiskey making whiskey doing this as a profession so I think uh, all for us <laughs> yeah. And I've got no doubt, you know, pages like your own and sharing your passion and enthusiasm will absolutely be encouraging and open doors for women that are maybe a little bit curious or hesitant to give whiskey a try, which is just wonderful. And also for, <laughs> for from the business side, I mean, distilleries, come on, there's a 50% uh, if you if you think about it, 50% more of consumers yeah that you could reach by yeah. making sure that you have females as as one of your target audiences when you're making making whiskey and, and advertising it. So, I mean, smart distilleries also understand that there's a whole new consumer base 
that you can reach. And uh, yeah, I think it's also just smart business and there's nothing wrong with yeah. that. So. Exactly. That's an excellent point. So we've just been talking about Finnish whiskey history a little bit, but we would like to know more about the new distillery. So I thought we should start with Helsinki Distilling Company because now you all live in Helsinki. So I assume you've all been there. Any thoughts? I just saw on Instagram that they are... Um, aging whiskey in Finnish oak casks. Yeah, that was interesting. That's super interesting. Yeah. And I absolutely love their, is it rye malt that we've had from them? Yeah. Yeah, and I absolutely love that. So they're also, of course, rye is is such a Finnish ingredient to use in, in whiskey. So I think, yeah, anything to do with rye, you can yeah. be sure that I'm a fan. <laughs> yeah. And I, I really like the idea of using Finnish oak It's interesting and new thing to do because usually they're like barrels from somewhere else. And that's really nice to see more Finnish products used in whiskey making. Exactly. And we got so many trees. (laughs) (laughs) But even the shape of the cask was quite unusual. It wasn't like round. So I I definitely want to see what comes from it. I love the the whole distillery aspect. Like it's in an old slaughterhouse. (laughs) Yeah, it's beautiful. It's There's a lot of characters. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Very cool. It's actually nearby where we are right now. From your social media, it seems you're also quite friendly with the guys at Kura Kira. <laughs> and we actually all have the classic Kura malt and Kura wood yeah. smoke in our glasses. And I think you ladies have got another one as well. Could you yeah. tell our listeners a little bit about Kura and why you love it so much before we think a little bit more about the aromas and the tasting notes? We actually visited Kura, the distillery three times four times four times yeah <laughs> and there's this, well there's this festival they have every summer we just go there have fun and drink whiskey dancing music but the story behind Gura is really finished one sauna friends thinking about doing something new that haven't been done in yeah. Finland uh, we resonate with that it's something that we appreciate the friendship and the well of course sauna but they use 100% rye so yeah. rye bread is something that every single Finn is is born with so <laughs> we eat a lot of rye bread and of course in the whiskey you can really taste the rye and I know that it sometimes of course for people who have not been so used to for example eating rye bread it can it has a very particular taste but for me for example I just I absolutely love it every time I drink Kira I feel like I'm at home so it has such a I don't know Finnish DNA ingrained yeah. in it and of course rye is not an easy grain to work with so I think that what Gullet the head distiller has done really well is create that sort of a profile that is still really balanced so I think the after taste and the th- the feeling in your mouth can be quite spicy because of the rye but there is still a beautiful balance of also sweetness in yeah. it. It's a beautiful Finnish artisan work, I yeah. would say. Also, from the marketing perspective, it's really smart. It's a very cool brand yeah. that they yeah. have. Made. Those naked yeah. men. Yeah. Running. <laughs> yeah. Oh. There's lots of naked antics on their yeah. on their social media. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we are shy people, but when it's like nudity oh, no. and sauna, it's we're not shy anymore. Yeah. For some reason. <laughs> Very normal. Fantastic. Inka was telling me a little bit about the sauna culture and how you have, you know, mobile ones, ones that flow on the lakes. It just blows my mind. I cannot wait to come to Finland. And also maybe come for the the Kura Fest that Sana yeah. mentioned, because what we did uh, previous year, not this year, but the previous year was that we got a bit tipsy and then we bought our own barrel. Yeah. We yeah, did. I was just going to ask you about the barrel. I think I've seen it on your social media. Yeah. We are happy about it, but we had some whiskey before making, making that decision <laughs> to buy a barrel. It was the next morning that we were like, so did we sign up? <laughs> big decisions after whiskey drinking before we go into tasting the first 
risky. I also wanted to ask a few questions about other distilleries. So you obviously know Derenpeli, which is yeah. probably the oldest whiskey distiller yeah. in Finland. So they got quite a few releases, uh, mm-hmm. whether you have anything you'd recommend. And then also the Valamo distillery, which is a monastery in Finland, yeah. actually near where I'm from. And that's a really cool concept as well. And I think you went there yeah. too, right? Yeah. yeah, both distilleries are really familiar or yeah. we are really familiar with and, and love them. We were at Terenbele just a few weeks ago, actually. So Terenbele just turned 20. So it is the oldest distillery mm-hmm. in Finland. They pretty much started that business uh, in Finland. So all hats off to them for, for making it. And of course, I think that the whiskeys that they make are just absolutely yeah. brilliant. What was their newest? Hello. Beautiful. It's absolutely really good. Beautiful. It's a smoky whiskey it has this sweetness i love everything sweet in whiskeys but also in like cakes and everything and it was like perfect balance with the smokiness and the sweetness nice i think that's like one of my favorite type of whiskey such a beautiful brand and our favorites from them i think the new Palo is a brilliant one but then yeah. we've had i think the whole series that they have Savu is a yeah. brilliant one and Kulo. And Kula, yeah. So they all have Finnish names. Has to do with, uh, how would you explain it? Farming and how you kind of cultivate the ground yeah. and, and etc. So, you know, very earthy kind yeah. of naming, uh, but mm-hmm. also represents i think what they're doing really well, which is bringing this beautiful balance of uh, earthiness, sweetness, smokiness yeah Uh, it's not a super super smoky whiskey so sometimes people compare it to some of the you know scottish ones which have a very like in your face smokiness yeah i think finnish whiskeys in in particular have a bit of a delicate yeah definitely the whole your mouthfeel and the nose it's not like that it's not that heavy Finland is full of peat and I did try the Savo expression when I tried it I was a little bit disappointed but only because I didn't quite understand at the time differences of the peat I was so used to these like heavily peated Scottish whiskies which I really enjoy my expectation was completely different but it's actually very pleasant smoky whiskey for those who aren't sure about smoke in whiskey it's actually very gentle and very pleasant absolutely and if you perhaps compare it to we haven't had that much uh, Japanese whiskies, but yeah. I would perhaps compare it to some of the, of course, in, in, in Japan, you don't have that many smoky whiskies, but there are some. And I would perhaps compare the Finnish ones. They're not as delicate as the Japanese mm-hmm. ones, but they're in between there somewhere. So yeah. I think for everyone, especially if you're new to whiskey and you're unsure if you like smoky whiskies, I would actually recommend tasting some of the Terenpeli ones. Yeah. I, I I just found out also that the malting company who supplies the malt for Terenpeli also supplies Macmura in Sweden. So yeah. Ah. yeah. Valamo is a monastery. And, and the head distiller is uh, Father Andreas. Wow. And he is super cool. <laughs> He's like a whiskey maker monk. Yeah. Uh, Amazing. Such a good stories about everything, like his life before coming to the monastery. It's interesting. I would l- love to read a book by him. We actually met him at, at the whiskey festival that I mentioned yeah. a couple of weeks ago. And we visited him two summers ago. But now that we met him, he remembered us and and he invited us uh, to visit the monastery during the winter. There's this beautiful wine and I guess whiskey cellar at the monastery where you can just uh, hang out and have a dram. And he was like, I have so many stories I want to tell to you girls. (laughs) You should come for an overnight visit at the monastery. And we were like, yes. That sounds like (laughs) so much like history and atmosphere. You know, yeah. to make yeah. amazing memories. Absolutely. You can actually go to the monastery and work there. So my mom left me with my grandparents for like a month and went and worked there and worked and with the cool. wine and just helped at the reception cool. and at the gift yeah. shop. So I, mm-hmm. I always had this idea that we should go and work for a week and just help yeah. with the whiskey making. That would be amazing. 
Yeah. We should do that together because we would love that yeah. as well. And it's a beautiful place. It's really beautiful. Yeah. It's by a lake full of history. Yeah. For me, it changes the way I try the whiskey. It's um, the history changes the the mouthfeel, the everything, the stories behind the monastery. And it's an experience. It's just not like a one tram. It's the whole experience. Absolutely. And I think they have a... Their warehouse is at Ilomansi, which is further from the monastery. Yep. But actually all the customer kind of casks, uh, if you buy them privately, I mean, they are actually held at the monastery yep. cellars and, and we got to also visit them. So that is a very special place, I think, for, for a private cask. Yeah, you know, the energy of it and with the history yeah. almost being soaked and absorbed into the, yeah. the wood and the, and the liquid. Absolutely. And because I love the sweetness, the church wine is really sweet. It's yeah. like a raisins. You're eating raisins, and mm. when they use the uh, barrels, it's so sweet and nice. And I love that whiskey for it. And they have a new whiskey, a very very smoky one. I've never had a whiskey from Valamo that smoky. Yeah, uh, it was just full of peat. That was a banger. You guys should be paid ambassadors for Finnish whiskey yeah. in general because, like, there's so much to love, it sounds like. Right, ladies, we want to talk a wee bit about Creole malt. The first uh, Finnish, <laughs> sorry, that was a bad one, wasn't it? Creole. <laughs> sorry, I couldn't I help myself. I decided I'm not going to laugh at you because that's just totally unfair, but that was so bad. No, sometimes I'm okay. Kura. <laughs> I watched the videos where there was this um, actor pronouncing those names, and I was like, I have to watch this and re-watch it and try to learn every single uh, name. And that's it, and practice, and then, at, well, if you're like me, just forget it in two seconds. <laughs> me too. Yeah. We had a whole, like, we actually had a guest on the show who was a Gaelic consultant for the Outlander TV show. So he was Whoa. telling us all the, yeah, so he was telling us all the stories behind the distillery names, but also did this competition for us, and we had to pronounce all these names. <laughs> and it was so bad. And like, wow. obviously, he was also using that like proper Gaelic pronunciation yeah. and different areas in Scotland pronounce the distillery names differently anyway. But we learned loads of new names, but I still can't remember. Any of <laughs> I need to listen back. I'm terrible. Whiskey sisters! We want to talk about this Finnish single batch rye whiskey. You were talking about the, the rye earlier. Made from 100% malted Finnish whole grain rye. So it's double pot distilled and aged in new American white oak casks. Bottled at 47.2%. First I was getting cranberries, vanilla wafers on the nose. Mm -hmm. It was sweet, but earthy. Like you said earlier, that it transfers you to Finland, like makes you feel it's very Finnish. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking eating cinnamon rolls in the forest, you know, amongst <laughs> the autumn leaves. That's what I got on the <laughs> nose. It's really beautiful yeah. on the nose, isn't it? Yeah. It Do is. you think it gets sweeter with air? But I guess, clearly yeah. get the cinnamon, the vanilla. Yeah. That's sort of a, I, I always feel like when I drink this at different points in time during the year, I always kind of get like during summer, I'm more like, it's a bit of a nice citrus here somewhere yeah. and now yeah. I'm like ah oh, it's cinnamon but I think it's the balance between the spiciness of the rye mm -hmm. and then the sweetness that's that's really the thing for me I think on the palate what I noticed oh, first of all the texture is quite pleasant but it's very that sweet raisiny like proper mm -hmm. juicy sweet raisins some other whiskies i i can get the kind of rum soaked raisins but this is just pure simple raisin and it was less spicy at first but then now with air i think there's much more of that spice i think this is really easy start quite clean so it's not doesn't linger too much and it's that's why it's easy if you want to try some finished whiskies this is good balance and great way to start. I could drink this every night. But I, don't. <laughs> I don't know if you, if your mom's ever made you this kind of food. Like for me, the finish made me think of that rye bread. But you know, when you have stale rye bread and it's covered in butter, fried in a frying yeah. pan with some milk, and then the bread soaks the milk and you just eat that. For me, it tastes like that. Absolutely. Yeah. For me, it's that I get the rye bread because... Yeah. Uh, 
we make our own rye bread or my grandma makes and uh, but for me this is like a fresh rye bread yeah yeah well. like it's, from the oven yeah. i now want to eat rye bread straight from the <laughs> oven yeah. i think there is this honey almost like almost yeah. marzipan like also kind of a taste that i get yeah with that raisins and and it's quite sweet actually i yeah. think but not as sweet as I think if you have some listeners who really love bourbons, for example, where you, of course, always have rye, but also other grains like yeah. corn in it as well. I think typically bourbons with rye are even more sweet. And of course, it comes from the mm -hmm. corn. This yeah. is more yeah. to my taste because yeah. it's not overly sweet. The, I don't think the initial taste wasn't that sweet. It's just like now I've had this in the glass for quite a while and it's mm -hmm. definitely going back to it. And I'm like, oh my God, I couldn't like, I don't understand how it's just changed and it's, it's much sweeter. Yeah. At one point I was getting a bit more like moss and that kind of still mm -hmm. those kind of forest flavors. But mm -hmm. I don't, I don't get that anymore. I've actually never had moss from this, but now that you're taking me yeah. to the forest, perhaps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I think the distilling process in itself with rye, you really need to know what you're doing. I mean, it's mm -hmm. a quite a complex process of what we've understood. Rye is not an easy grain to work with. And I think that achieving such balance is, is not easy and you have to remember 100% rye so we can go on to the next one you didn't have the exactly the same you got no. smoke but you got a different finish yeah it's been santo finish but we had plenty of wood smoke oh. because <laughs> <laughs> it's our so, favorite yeah Giro wood smoke is uh, honoring the oldest kind of Finnish sauna the smoke sauna and using ancient northern traditions the rye used in Giro wood smoke has been introduced to alder smoke in a hundred year old Rihi barn and it's also double distilled aged in a combination of French oak new American oak and ex bourbon casks and bottled also at 47.2 again I don't know if I'm just being weird because we're talking about Finland just, <laughs> you know <laughs> bringing me all these things so aroma first of all I think it was quite mellow at first and I was getting like created nutmeg and you know those Magnum Classic ice creams? Yeah, oh. yeah. I had that on the nose as well. Yeah, I like Madagascar vanilla. Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah, Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Very nice. Again, has a very nice mouthfeel and it's kind of like mouth coating, quite pleasant, but much spicier initially than the previous one. <laughs> I wrote down, it tastes like sauna when you've, when you've used those birch leaves. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? When you beat yourself up, yeah. Yeah, you know, we we make those like punch of birch leaves, and you like hit yeah. each, like each other with like them in a hot sauna. Finnish people are crazy. Well, yeah, we are so weird. You do this whip with the birch leaves, and then yeah. you just smash and invigorate and get the blood flowing. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Amazing. <laughs> but that was my initial <laughs> taste. But it's, again, now I'm coming back to it. It's definitely much sweeter. And you get those, that kind of cinnamon bun croissant coated like with sugar icing or something like that. Yeah. But there's definitely something a bit earthy there. Gura, you could give me like a hundred glasses or drums with different whiskey. And I would say that you could pick out Gura yep. from them. Yeah. So I think the basis is somehow similar. So you can always get that certain profile and then of course the variation between the smokiness and in wood smoke that sort of birch really shines through and it takes you to that smoke sauna but still I think that the base flavors are quite similar earthy charcoal like with a slight yeah. herbal yeah, yeah. when you have like a fireplace and it's that kind of smokiness it's yeah it's like really warming and for me it's like memories with being in a next to a fire and fireplace and yeah. and yeah. I actually prefer this wood smoke over the Gura malt because mm -hmm. I love the roundness it has and more flavor. What else is in store? What else is ahead for Whiskey Girls Finland? Well, you know, winter is coming, so that's our Prime months, yeah. you know, ice swimming, <laughs> skiing, drinking a lot of whiskey. I think yeah. we're like winter people. So when it gets yeah. cold and you're just, you know, Finnish people stay at home, 
that's when you drink the most whiskey, right? Yeah. So <laughs> Kalsarikannit, hey? Yeah. yeah. Kalsarikannit. So staying at home in your underpants yeah. and drinking. Fantastic. Any nation that has a word for that deserves a visit. <sighs> Ladies, we like to ask our guests, mm-hmm. If you were to be able to share a whiskey with a celebrity, either dead or alive, who would you choose and what whiskey would you drink with them? That's such a good question. Yes, because I'm a kind of nerdy girl and um, I love my fantasy, I would like to share a triumph with uh, Tolkien. I love those books. That's like my childhood Lord of the Rings and Silmarillion and amazing. I love those books. And he used Finnish language as, as inspiration. That's yeah. right. So he did yeah. for the elf yeah. language. Yeah, and, and nobody understands. So that's Finnish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I would love to share tram like Finnish tram, and I would go with the um, Balamo Monastery, probably the church. Wine casket tram. That's yeah. such yeah. a cool answer. And talk about, you know, your love of history and the depth of yeah. conversation. And yeah. he had a brilliant mind, didn't he? I would pick Jacques Cousteau. And that's because he was my childhood hero when I was uh, a small girl. Uh, my father used to always have his uh, nature documentaries on. And I just remember that red uh, hat that he had on and and exploring the sea and for me sea is something that is hugely important mm-hmm. for me very therapeutic to be yeah. by the sea I live by the sea I've lived my entire life close to the sea yeah. I actually go on walks every single day just to relax and calm down and, and, and yeah. look just to connect uh, with it to connect so I think that he had that connection and my dram would be and this is I think a brilliant dram that I feel that we connect really well uh, which is the Clenfide uh, winter storm wow. it's a stunning bottle and mm-hmm. it's matured in ice wine casks uh, uh, from Canada yes and mm-hmm. it's not a Finnish whiskey but for me I feel it should be it takes me back to the Finnish winter which mm-hmm. is my favorite season so I would pick that one thank you so much ladies kiitos paljon kiitos kiitos teille this was fantastic thank you for having us it was an honor so absolutely <laughs> love talking yeah. with you two girls you're such an inspiration for us so oh, thank you so lovely. much yeah it's been amazing thank you so much Dram on fire. So we're going to discuss Malt Mates' second release. And Malt Mates are independent bottlers created by three self-proclaimed ravers from back in the day who have joined forces to create some unique whiskies. Their branding is super funky. The first release was quite 90s themed and the second release has got an 80s theme. So their bottle and packaging and everything are quite different, aren't they, Inca? Yeah, I, I like the colours on this, the second one, because it's a bit more turquoise, which I love. Yeah. The second one is bottled at 46% ABV and it's mixture of peated and unpeated single malts from the same distillery. The unpeated is significantly older than the peated one. It's then finished in Tuscan red wine Chianti casks. How nice is that? Uh, so Jen, do we know where where the single malt is actually from? The malt itself is from Badakhro. Let's first talk about the colour thoughts. Yeah, it's a really beautiful colour in my opinion like quite sunset golden like with hues of pink tones I really think the color is super inviting what do you think yeah it's beautiful it's kind of I would say kind of plush pinkish like makes me think of rosé some of Italian roses that are they're like barely rosé is it white wine is it rosé that is so light but it still has that kind of pink hue absolutely I was wondering something you know we can't really talk about this beautiful color without mentioning Blair Bowman's recent tweet about the plush pink color of some whiskies. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. And he was sort of, I've never heard anything like this before. Have you, Anka? No, I didn't actually. And yeah, he was basically saying that according to the Scotch Whiskey Association guidance, 
means if Scotch whiskey is matured in a wine cask until it becomes bright pink or red, it would no longer qualify as Scotch whiskey. Like, is there a chart? You know, is there a chart of like redness? Because there's quite yeah. a few drams that have got beautiful hues of pink. Yeah, tones. Exactly. I wouldn't probably say that this one, you know, it's not definitely it's not bright pink and it's definitely yeah. not red. It's just that kind of gentle pinkish hue which is really nice but I've definitely seen quite a few recently but I just don't understand why who cares who's the boss of that I guess the SWE are the boss of it but I wonder if they have like a chart people are yeah. like looking on the color chart for these drums I would like to find out more about that we should maybe ask Blair definitely it's very interesting okay so how about the aromas Oh, I got really beautiful aromas. Fresh pineapple, poached pears, kind of like the perfume of like violet flowers. Oh. But then like sweet candied nuts with like a golden syrup. I really enjoyed it in the nose. So fruity, floral, but kind of juicy candy nuts and syrupiness as well. Summer fruits, red berries, and definitely that I was thinking of rosé wine as well a little bit, but uh -huh. maybe it's because of my eyes, my brain was tricked. <laughs> but there was also something like sweetness, like marshmallows. And then after a while in the glass, I was getting salted toffee. But also you could still get a little bit of that subtle peat. Ah, oh, Did you yeah. find the peat? It's not it's not strong at all. It's kind of that on the background, just lingering a little bit. Do you know, I've got some in the glass just now. And as you're saying that, I can get a really lovely, soft wafts of peat. I think when I was first nosing this, I was getting so excited about the juicy aromas I was getting. I was kind of forgetting about the peat and I wasn't concentrating. But now I'm focusing yeah. on it, I can. I thought it was really strange. Like on the nose at first, the initial thing was like, you know, strawberries, raspberries, all these red berries mm -hmm. but then actually the palette is completely different what how did you find it on the palette what did you get it's pretty spicy a lot of mm -hmm. black pepper a bit of oakiness very warming mouthfeel kind of perfect for this kind of cooler weather the peat is more floral like heathery peat or something it's not intrusive definitely not intrusive i very much agree on that pepper spice a very pleasant level of spice, maybe mild licorice, the apple and pear, but like that you would get in an apple pie for me on the palate. And I think on the finish, the, the spice was still lingering there for a while, but it was becoming a little bit more sweeter. I've got quite a reasonably long finish and definitely that sweetness. And I've written woody, but I think sometimes I mean like subtle smoke when I say woody. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're thinking like burnt wood. Or... Yeah. What we should also say with this release, there's nods to that kind of series of now that's what I call music on the bottle. It says now that's what I call whiskey volume two, that kind of play on words. And their tasting notes on their website, I think, are all kind of like homage to song like names and lyrics and stuff. So I love that link between malts and music. Yes, so you can buy it on the, uh, from their website and it's £55 a bottle. I really enjoy this whiskey, Anka. What about yourself? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I really enjoyed noticing it. It's just looking at it. Um, yeah. I'm totally seduced by the colour. <laughs> sexy sexy whiskey color but yeah i like i guess this time of the year as well i like a little bit more spicier whiskeys and a little bit more warming feeling you know now that's what we call a dram on fire <laughs> <laughs> whiskey sisters whiskey fact so recently, one of our fantastic listeners contacted us to ask about the story behind the Balvini bottle shape. She said the top looked like a whiskey glass. So Inka, you looked into this and have an answer for us. Yes, so the Balvini distillery still has a boil ball at the base of the swan's neck. And the boil ball shape has been replicated in the bottle design. And while we're actually talking about bottled shapes and designs, do you know the story behind Ballantine's rectangular bottle? No. Legend has it that the famous square shape came about so that the whiskey salesman could make their sales without looking or sounding 
something suspicious during prohibition. Oh. Yeah, so they could easily stack these bottles in a suitcase. Imagine those old, like, kind of square suitcases. <laughs> yeah. And these bottles just, like, but you could probably fit quite a few. I like the ingenuity they are. Like, uh, they just uh, had to be creative. Full yeah. respect for all the ways that people got around prohibition. Yeah. Oh, my God. Actually, just now we're talking about this. You sent me today the, the shoes. Oh, my goodness. I was actually just thinking about there as you were describing that. Yeah. yeah there was this amazing post on Instagram. Um, so what it was, was a picture of shoes, like a pair of brogues, like leather brogues that you would put in and like tie up. But back in the days of prohibition, they would put different sole on them so that the indentation on the soft ground would look like cattle hooves. How amazing yeah. is that? Like, so when they're crossing like, uh, you know, someone else's land, smuggling their whiskey, it would just look like it was cattle. We like a crazy shoe anchor, but we don't have any with like cattle feet. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's plenty. We are Whiskey Girls Finland and you are listening to Whiskey Sisters, the podcast. So next week we will feature some great trams from Glasgow Distillery. Very excited for that episode. Just want to say a massive thank you to our new listeners that have been tuning in and, and those that have stuck with us. People that have taken the time to give us a five-star rating on Apple. Thank you for your kind words. It is really hugely appreciated. And we would just like you to pour yourself a dram of 1770 whiskey and join us next Wednesday. But meanwhile, as always, you can find us up to mischief on Instagram at whiskeysisters.podcast, Twitter at Whiskey Sisters, and Facebook at Whiskey Sisters Podcast. May your class be full and your dram on fire. Till next time, sugar. Bye.